Okay, so we've, we are going to talk about the reaction of these uh, hexacyl complexes with ammonia and with carbonate ions. Now we've already established that all of these complexes are acidic and that's because the central metal iron, oh, sorry, so you've got uh, copper there, is datively bonded to water molecules and the, uh, the positive charge on the iron is going to draw charge out of the water molecule which releases, reduces electron density and uh, makes it easier to, uh, in that bond, makes it easier to release a proton. I think we've all also said that the three plus ions are going to be more acidic than the two plus ions because you're great, you know, the, the effect is greater there. Right, um, so they're all acidic, so they tend to react with bases and ammonia, of course, is a uh, granted Lowry base. And, um, so let's see, let's use copper as an example to see what happens there. So we've seen already, if you get the hexacyl copper and you remove two protons from it, you'll form this species, uh, which will be uncharged. And because it's uncharged, you get a precipitate. In the case of copper, you get a blue precipitate. Now you need to remove two protons from the hexacyl complex in order to do that. Each ammonia can remove one proton, so you're going to need two ammonias to balance this equation, and you're going to end up with two NH4 plus ions on um, on that side of the equation. So we can see the, this is when you add dilute ammonia, and the ammonia is behaving as a Bronsted-Lowry base, it's accepting protons. Okay, now in the case of them. Uh, in the in, in the case of all the other ones, that's all that happens. You just get the precipitate, um, and nothing else happens. With ammonia, though, uh, the ammonia, if you add if you add excess ammonia, concentrated ammonia, then you can get further reactions occurring. So, let's say we start. We you've got our blue precipitate, um, which is going to be CuH two O four OH twice. Uh, if you add, as I say, conch ammonia, that precipitate will redissolve because what happens is you replace <coughs> some of the ligands with ammonia ligands. So you end up with Cu, uh, you two waters remain behind, <coughs> and you end up with four ammonia ligands, and they are all in the square planar position and the water is sticking up. One will be sticking up and one will be sticking down. <coughs> the overall shape of the thing will be octahedral. And that of course will be charged, so it's soluble. <coughs> and that is a nice dark blue solution. Uh, well, let's balance that equation. So we need to have four ammonias here. And what will be released will be two water molecules and two OH minus ions. Now let's think about the role of ammonia in this reaction. Well, it's acting as, we can say it's one acting as a ligand. Or we can say, because it's donating a lone pair, we can say that it's a, a Lewis base, behaving as a Lewis base. So we can see here, when you add it in just a dilute, you get it behaves as a bronsted Lowry acid, and when you add excess, it behaves as a Lewis base. Let's <coughs> say so this doesn't happen with the other three ions, it only happens with uh, the copper two plus. Uh, just, just in case you, it wasn't clear what I said about the shape of that, just to show you, uh, show you what I mean, you will get uh, as your copper, you get your ammonias. In the square planar position, NH3, NH3 there and there, and the water ligands, one sticks up, one sticks down. <coughs> okay, so let's just do a little summary table of what happens with all with all, all four of them then. So um, once again I'll do hexaqua complex.
um, I will say add NH3. So we want the four, we've got a copper two plus, iron two plus, iron three plus, and finally the aluminium iron. <laughs> All right, so we've, we've said with the copper, you get a blue precipitate of the, of that, first of all, add excess, it redissolves, and you get Cu uh, H2O2. NH3 four times. It's got a two plus charge on it. Let's put the brackets around if it's uncharged. Okay, so that's that's that one. Now let's do Fe3 plus because that is pretty straightforward. With Fe3 plus, you are going to get a precipitate of FeH2O3, OH3. So you need three ammonias to remove three H plus signs. You get that, um, and that will be a brown precipitate. Let's do aluminium next. Now, aluminium, you get Al H two O three O H three, and that's uncharged. That's a white precipitate. Now, you remember with the NaOH, this precipitate would redissolve because you could remove another OH minus, but the Oh, the ammonia isn't a strong enough base is to remove any more protons from this from this species, so um, <coughs> it won't redissolve. <coughs> Add excess, nothing happens. Okay, it will not redissolve. Unlike the case with the sodium hydroxide, where it does. Iron two, well, you get a green precipitate of H two O four, dark green precipitate O H twice. Um, but what will happen is, as we saw with the case of the hydroxide ions, it will oxidize in air to a brown precipitate. You need O2 to the brown precipitate. And the formula of that, of course, is Fe H2O3, OH3. So that's the end of the story with, <coughs> with, with ammonia. Uh, copper is the, the odd one out because <coughs> uh, the ammonia can act as a ligand or, or a Lewis base when you add excess. Uh, let's do the, um, <coughs> the carbonate ion. And there is some rhyme or reason to what's going on with the carbonate ion. Um, and what I'll do is I'll do this. Oh, sorry. Get rid of all that. Okay, and let's see what happens there. Now, the thing about carbonate iron, it is a it is a very weak base. It's not a good base, and so it will only react with the slightly stronger of those two weak acids. And of course, these two, the three pluses, are are stronger. These are stronger weak acids. And so with carbonate you do get an acid base reaction. With with these with these two, you don't get an acid base reaction. They're too weak. You just get a straightforward, you get a precipitation reaction. You get a precipitate of the carbonate. So, for example, right, uh, all you'll see with the copper, you get um, copper, and I'll just write that. Remember, that really is the hex aqua, but I'm not drawing it as that. Uh, and carbonate ions, which come from the sodium carbonate. 
they're both in aqueous solution. We're going to get a precipitation reaction. Copper carbonate is insoluble. And you get a sort of bluey green precipitate of copper carbonate. And the same thing happens with the iron two. I won't write the equation there, but you're going to form iron two carbonate, which is a dark green precipitate. I'll summarize that in the table at the end. Now with these, let's talk about what happens with the um, with these, because that it's a bit more complicated with the three plus ions because they're slightly stronger weak acids. Right, you do get an acid base reaction. So let's think aluminium. So if you get aluminium, H2O, six, right, and you add some carbonate ions. Right, what happens is you, uh, well, if you remember, how does, what happens if you add any acid to, car, car, to carbonate ions? You get carbon dioxide forming. So I'll write that down there. CO3, two minus. If you add two protons to that, you get CO2 and water. And here, the carbonate ion can remove three protons from our hexaqua. And if it does that, it's going to form Al, H2O3, OH3, and that will be uncharged, so it's going to be a white precipitate. Now, <clears throat> it's going to be quite hard to balance that equation. So what I'm going to do, so you, we are going to get some, we're going to get some carbon dioxide given off, and we'll get some water. So to help us balance it, I'm going to do, like we do with, with uh, redox reactions, we do half equations where we, we show losing electrons. Here we're going to do the same thing, but instead of losing or gaining electrons, we're going to be losing or gaining protons. So here's the carbonate acting as a base. And let's have the aluminium hydroxide acting, uh, the aluminium hexaqua, sorry, acting as the acid. Do that in a different color. So green. So you're going to have Al H2O6, 3 plus. Now that is going to form Al H2O. <coughs> 3 OH3, which is the white precipitate that we've seen we get with the ammonia and with the sodium hydroxide. Now that has lost three protons. So to make this equation balance, because this one is losing, is gaining two, and this one is losing three, I'm going to times that equation by three and times that equation by two and add them together. So here goes the balancing then right so we want two aluminiums we want three carbonate ions we're going to form two of those we're going to form three carbon dioxides and three to three of the waters there so we get three h2o so that's how i would balance that and exactly the same reaction occurs with the iron as well and that's the end of the story with the iron so just to summarize that then let's do um uh let's see what what we'd see observations okay so hexaqua iron again ion wrong iron and add sodium carbonate Right, so we'll do the, the two pluses first of all. So we've got our copper two plus and the iron two plus. So we just get a, for the copper, we just get a precipitate and that's blue, green of copper carbonate. So no acid base reaction. With the iron, we get a uh, precipitate, which is a dark green of iron two carbonate. Right, with the Fe3 plus, we get a precipitate brown, but the precipitate is not the iron three carbonate, 
is which doesn't exist you can't have it it's that it's it's what you get from pulling protons off the hexaqua ion and of course you will also see fizzing because you're going to get co2 liberated and with the aluminium the same you get a white precipitate Um, and you'll get the form of that precipitate is well, it's when you rip three protons off the hexaqua iron, you get that, and you'll also see fizzing there. Okay, so that is the end of that topic. Now, a little word of warning if you're using any legacy papers, yeah, you will see questions on they'll ask you the same thing, but you see questions to do with cobalt. 2 plus hexaqua and with chromium 3 plus hexaqua and they're not on the spec anymore so just ignore those questions if you see any questions about cobalt and chromium it's only the copper the iron 2 and iron 3 and aluminium that you need to do